Hi, everybody. This is Elizabeth Stone from Lux Self, and I'm going to be answering your questions and that I got over email yesterday. So I sent out everybody in on my email list a ask me anything, and I've got about 55 questions to answer. So let's get started. All right. So I'm going to just answer these one by one. I made a list of some of them, but there's more that have rolled in. So I'm just going to go quick, quick, quick through these. So the first one is how long is a good amount of time to wait to get engaged? Um, a good rule of thumb is at least a year of knowing someone. You want to see them through all of the seasons. And, you know, if they propose to you sooner, you can tell them that. Next, why men make excuses when they know they're wrong? Oh, and if, you know, you see me on here, go ahead and, um, Say hello in the chat, and um, if you can see me and hear me and everything. So I wanna make sure that everybody, it's hard to see whether people are watching you or not. So um, I just wanted to throw that in there. So next, why do men make excuses when they know they're wrong? Well, it's the same reason anyone makes excuses when they know they're wrong. They feel bad about it and they don't want to admit it and they feel shame, so that's why. Hi. I just want to know why I'm struggling too much and why I can't ever find good men and what do you see in my future? Now, I'm not a fortune teller. Some of these questions were a little like my crystal ball and magic wand are in the shop, but there could be a lot of reasons you're struggling. It most likely is mindset. You know, it's mostly like not looking in the places where you might find a good man. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why. So if you want more clarity or coaching for your individual situation, so you can actually figure out where you're at rather than just being like confused and not sure what you should be doing, then definitely check out Manifest True Love, which includes six group coaching calls where I'll answer your questions one-on-one -on -one and get particular attention for just you on your situation. So next, um, I am curious why guys string girls along instead of just being honest. Now, men show their position with their actions, so they don't usually see it as stringing you along. It's more like, well, I'm not totally hot on this person, but, you know, we have an okay time together and it kind of boosts my ego. So they'll just kind of respond to you if you come into their area, but not necessarily push the ball down the court when they're really trying to pursue you. So they don't like to have conversations where they sit you down and devastate you if they can possibly avoid it. They're just not into that. So they vote with their feet and it's really to tell, easy to tell where one's at by looking at his feet and proceeding accordingly. All right, next question. I'm in love with someone that has a partner. He says he loves me too. How do I let him go and attract the right one for me? How do I open my heart into giving other guys a chance? So you let him go by turning toward other people and opportunities. The thought press shouldn't be, let me spend six months trying to get over this. It should be more like, what do I want? And then you put together a plan to go from there. And you give other guys a chance by simply meeting and experiencing more of them. Next question. Getting someone to find me as wonderful as I find my own self. Now, this isn't actually a question, but I really like your affirmation that you're wonderful and that will go a long way. I really I like that. So you just keep defining yourself as wonderful and then you put yourself out there in equal proportion. That would be what I would say to that. So. I'm struggling with being happy with my self image. I'm constantly thinking the type of guy I like would never love a girl like me. I think I'm not pretty enough to be with them. Well, there's several mindset problems here. And first it's the limiting beliefs behind what you think about the type of guy wants. So like what you think he wants is one mindset that you've already kind of think that he doesn't want you. And then what you think you're like versus what you not found valuable about yourself. So there's two problems. One is that you already have decided that the guys you like won't like you. So automatically you're going to be looking for rejection. And then second, 
you don't think that you're pretty enough to be with him with those guys that already don't like you. So I would work on both mindsets. And then when you switch that around, what you start to see in your 3D world will change. Next, I'm struggling with my feelings for this one guy. And I wish that he, I knew what his thoughts were and how he feels. He's hard to read. So patience will serve you really well here. And so will adding more men to your life to be excited about. Um, men are really big on sharing their feelings about women they aren't pursuing. But I'd be willing to guess from your message that you want him and you're afraid he doesn't want you or he's not pursuing you. In either case, you can safely count on him. You can count him out until he decides to come toward you or you meet someone else. So my husband says he wants a divorce. We have three kids. He just left for work one day and never came back. We have little to no communication. He says he found another companion. How do I get him back? We've been together 12 years. The kids and I are devastated. So I'm really sorry to hear you're going through this. And I know what it feels like to want somebody back. But here's the best advice I can give you. Do nothing in his direction at all. And do everything you can to empower yourself toward making yourself happy again. Because he'll either come to his senses and really treat you the way that you are hoping for or he won't but if you're really super happy then you won't be left like holding the bag resting your hopes and dreams on him returning into your life and then just staying stuck until he does that you want to just proceed as if this is permanent and this is a decision that you know will serve you both better in the end because even though it doesn't look like it usually it serves you better in the end and i know that that's simple and not easy and I want to honor what you're going through. So how do you address when he starts pulling away? Being extra nice or ignoring isn't the answer. So what do we exactly say? This is for the beginning stages during dating. Also, I've heard it's never okay to ask a guy, is there ever a possibility to be more than friends? She, it should always be up to the man to pursue. What are your thoughts? Is there ever anything appropriate to say to a man you're interested in for a relationship? I've known someone for a long time that I would like more with. Is it best to always stay silent? Okay, so there's multiple things in this question. So I'm gonna start with what to, how to address when he starts pulling away. So, excuse me, during the early stages of dating, you shouldn't even be noticing that anything like that is happening because you should be so busy with whatever else you have going on that any one man in your experience doesn't, shouldn't make too much of a difference except, oh, it's been a few days since I've heard from him. You shouldn't, there's no reason to be addressing it because you barely know each other and he should be able to move at whatever pace he wants to move at. There's no conflict there. So you don't need a strategy if you're not really in a place where you think that he owes you something because he's doing things in your direction. I hope that makes sense. Um, and you're right, being extra nice or ignoring him isn't the answer. So you, yeah, you don't ignore him. You just don't have a problem with it to begin with because there is no, there's like, there's no conflict. Okay, so on to the next part of your question. So you don't ask, a man if there's a possibility to be more than friends when he's pursuing you. So you don't, that's just not even a question that you need to ask because he'll be asking you that. And so this whole thought process like, is like this pick me, pick me thing, you don't need to do. You don't even need to worry about it. Um, as far as your per is the person that you're in, you know concerned about, I would just think about whether or not he's come toward you in a romantic way. And I would look for any subtle signs that that's the case. So he might, you know, have tried in the past and then you weren't interested or didn't seem interested and he stopped trying to pursue you. So um, you, you could spend some time alone with him and see if um, you kind of gel and start to have kind of a romantic spark going on. And then you, you know, continue to do that with him instead of, you know, sitting him down and having a talk with him because that will probably 
go badly, even if you're hoping for this, you know, that he really does like you, if you're hoping for that result, it will go badly if you're like, well, how about, how about it? Because he just won't respond in the way you want. All right. My boyfriend of three years is moving to Germany. We had a really good relationship, or so I thought. He just told me that he's not really comfortable with being in a relationship and doesn't want to stay together after he moves. I'm sorry. So you just tell him, thank you for the times we spent together and put yourself back out on the market. Don't sit him down and have any dramatic talks with him or tell him you'll wait for him. You vote on his decision with your feet. So he said he doesn't want to do it anymore. You say, great, let's not do it anymore. And he has to have the experience of missing you and coming back if that's what he wants to do. But he can't do that in the mindset that is in now. So you have to give him the opportunity to miss you. All right, next. How do I find an alpha male? I am also an alpha female. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna check the stream to see if anybody has said anything. Okay, you have not. All right. You find an alpha male by watching how he acts. So does he take care of himself? Does he mind his frame? And what I mean by that is, does he pay attention to the distance his life is moving in and how he's doing, you know, financially, socially, all of those things. Does he take care of himself? Does he take care of the people in his life? And then once you've located one, you flirt to attract him. Just the same as any other man, you know, you stay in your own, you know, feminine and you continue to be attractive as long as you don't go over there and start trying to order him to court you because you feel like you're the alpha as well. So since you said that you're an alpha female, I want to make sure that you're not like in your competitive, conquering and controlling masculine energy because that will drive him away and make him feel like there's just two of you. And um, I talk more about feminine energy a lot in um, Manifest True Love, so definitely check that out. But you, there's not going to be any polarity if you're like trying to pick him up and drag him off to your lair. What it truly means to be alpha is to have brains and heart, but... A lot of people get it mistaken to be like, okay, we're all super strong here. And that's not really what it was originally meant when it came to people. All right. I have been with my partner for 16 years and probably the last six months, I no longer desire him or want to be intimate with him. How can I get past this and find him attractive and desirable again? It's definitely affecting our relationship. and I'm afraid of losing him if I can't change my mindset. Okay. So first Esther Perel, um, just look her up. She's very famous for having done a lot of research and work on maintaining intimacy and keeping things hot. So she has some good materials about this. So check her out. And then next, uh, Michelle Weiner Davis's advice to just do it when it comes to sex and intimacy is really good because lots of times once you get started, then you don't want to stop. And also, if you haven't already, go get your hormones checked because you mentioned a specific amount of time. So if you, everything was going okay and you found him desirable six months ago, you have to think about what it is that has changed in that time period. Did you let yourself go? Did he let himself go? What is going on? So address those things. Because if you said, oh, well, I've never been that attracted to him and now I am, that would be a different conversation. But since something has changed, then I would consider that. But definitely do something about this because it really matters. Okay, just checking here okay so next up just the email just said male vulnerability and expression of it all right so i'm not exactly sure what you're saying here but i just want to say this about male vulnerability so here's the problem we give men so many mixed messages we tell them we want to hear what they're feeling and then when they tell us we shut down and disagree with them and then hurt them and we tell them to buck up and man up. And then we get mad because they won't tell us their feelings. Well, no wonder they don't want to tell us our feelings. So the best way to, you know, make somebody share is to not want to make them share. You just don't, you just don't try to require that. Stop trying to get vulnerability from the men in your life. It's not what they're made for. And if they do it, that's wonderful. But I think we should stop trying to dig for this. So next, my boyfriend has ended our relationship three weeks ago to be precise. He went from telling me daily I was everything he wanted and the only one 
for him. And we talked about getting married and I'm getting scared feeling it wasn't right anymore. I'm devastated and didn't see it coming. How to move past this heartache. Well, first, I'm really sorry you're going through that. Um, three weeks isn't very long in heartbreak land, even though I know time slows down and everything feels like an eternity when you're in that space. But the mindset that will help you is to be proud of him for making a decision to call it a day and proud of yourself for being able to handle it. Because maybe he didn't want to put you through the experience of being with somebody who isn't ready and doesn't want to get married right now. Um, so I would just take him at his word and appreciate yourself for being able to deal with this experience because you will get through it and it will get better. Um, and you move past it by just making yourself happy. And when you're ready, get out there and start dating. I know that's probably the last thing that you want to hear, but that really helps. So um, I'm sorry you're going through that. All right. I'm confused as to what to reply to a guy who said, who you just meet, met recently online for barely one month. We only met once because he was based overseas. He told me he really likes me a lot over WhatsApp and he asked if I feel the same way too. I don't really know what to reply to him and started dodging, tried dodging the question instead because I wasn't sure of someone who was miles away and plus I just met him once. I do like him, but I'm not sure to what extent yet. Also, I've heard that it's unwise to declare your liking to someone, especially in the beginning phase of dating. Now that I dodged his questions, I can sense that he's being cautious and distance himself from me. I took a step back too. I am aware that he will be coming, after, coming over to town soon and I don't want to appear needy by asking him if we will be meeting up. I know he will be coming to town this coming Saturday, so how do you handle such a situation? So one, you're right, one month is not a very long time, but when people see something they like, sometimes they just go after it. So you have to remember that someone liking you doesn't obligate you. If they're not doing anything besides telling you that they like you, then you just let them tell you that. I mean, great. <laughs> you, know, you, you have to become afraid when they tell you that they like you. You know, he didn't try to move into your house. So you can just enjoy the attention rather than becoming afraid of the attention and shutting down and doing all of this. You just say, thank you. Or great, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself too. Um, but one thing that I think we should do is not punish people for not doing dating right. I mean, sometimes there's weird things that happen and you have to go with your gut there. But it sounds like you still really want to see this person. So, you know, don't like read up or like listen to someone like me and be like, well, this is how it should be every single time. And since it's not like this, then it's wrong and you're doing it wrong and then move on. Because we're all just people and we're all just struggling to get get by. So as far as Saturday goes, if he knows you're in town, you know, I would just give him a little time to suggest something. He might do this at the last minute. And if he doesn't know you're there, then tell him you'll be there. And if he asks you to do something, go do something. But very simple. Let him decide what he wants to do in your direction. So firstly, I want to say I'm grateful to have stumbled across your page and I appreciate your dedication to helping us manifest the love we want and deserve. How can I embrace my feminine energy? If a man seems closed off and emotionally unavailable and even withdraws, what is the best way to handle that and attract him back toward you? Thanks so much. Okay, the best way to handle someone who is withdrawing is to give them more space than they think they want. So back in the day, people couldn't catch wild Mustangs. It's not like they just had a truck they could go round them up with. And they discovered that they could catch the horses by laying down in a field nearby and totally ignoring them. So after a while, the people would just get up and walk back to the corral and the horses would get curious and follow them right into the corral. And of course, the people must have figured it out by accident, but it works with people as well. So in practice, staying in your feminine helps with this because you're allergic to chasing anything that isn't yours. So you're not in the, out in the field trying to sprint around after the horses, you know, to try to catch them. You're minding your own business. That helps very well with dealing with men who are withdrawing because you just let them withdraw. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You have other stuff you can be doing. Do you like knitting? Do something else. So 
as far as the other part of your question about embracing your feminine energy, definitely come think about joining me inside Manifest True Love where I teach just that. I have a whole module about the feminine energy system and it isn't simple or easy to just sum up here, but the Mustang analogy I just gave definitely will help with men who are on the run. Okay, let me just check to see if anything's going on in the chat here. Okay. Next, I'm dating again after five years of being single and my third marriage. The guy I'm involved with is by far the most difficult one yet. He's 49 and has a lot of female friends. He drinks a lot, but he's functional, goes to work every day, has his own home, pays his own bills. He's been divorced nine years, no kids. I forgot to mention that I've known this man most of my life and his family. We sleep together in the same bed after two months of dating, but still have not had sex. His boss's daughter is one of his ex-girlfriends who he did have, I think it says sex wife, but I think it, she meant to say sex with, and they are still very good friends. In fact, she meets us out pretty often. I like her fine, but I feel like a third wheel. I feel like I need to back off of him lately and just let it, let it be. Any thoughts? So this is a multi-part question because you're sleeping in the same bed together but you're you have not had sex with him and i don't know if that's because i don't know why that is i don't know if that's because he hasn't initiated sex and you haven't wanted to do it or if because it seems too soon or something i don't know and then we have this other problem with this other other party over here so First of all, I would just stop with the sleeping in the same bed together if you're not having a relationship with them. Just stop doing that because it, it's like the ultimate in comfort. I mean, you're really, you're almost giving away something more intimate than sex because it's just very um, special experience to be invited into your bed like that. And, you know, I agree. Like when you say back off of him, I mean, the position should already be that you're backed off and that the man comes toward you. So from what you said here, yeah, back off of him because you're not experiencing courtship here. And if you feel like a third wheel, that's no good either. So yes, definitely back off. All right. Next question. How do I love myself? Well, this is quite a large question and a very short, short email. So you love yourself by doing the daily actions that um, support a self-loving position. And then you get more and more into it as the time goes on. You don't start out with perfect self-love one day. Like you just step into it. You do things to cultivate it. All right. Now we have, hi, I'm just wondering whether my boyfriend loves me or he is just pretending he doesn't come and spend time with me or just pretending he doesn't come and spend time with me. His career is always an excuse when we should, but what confuses me is that when he, that he always sends me texts every morning and night telling me he loves me. And even when I decide to stop talking to him, he calls to, and talks like someone who's caring. Sometimes I have a feeling that he may have another girlfriend and he's comparing us please help because I'm starting to lose interest and I think I still care. All right. Well, you need to decide what you want. So you think you still care, like decide if you still care. You decide if you're still interested, decide, decide what you want, because it just sounds like you're just being like washed around, but he's actually paying attention to you. So, I mean, if he, doesn't want to spend time with you and isn't coming toward you, then go find something else to do or someone else to do or tell him that it's over. But, you know, he's still texting you every morning and night. I mean, I don't know. It, it's hard to say from your question how often you're really getting attention or any of that. All right. Next one. Is my husband with another woman besides me? Well, like I said a minute ago, my crystal ball and magic wand are in the shop. It's hard to know. All right. Right now, I am struggling with a man who came at me hard only to fall later for him and have him say 
He likes me more than yesterday, but shows otherwise. And the reason being is due to remembering his past relationship failure. He was with her for three years and he is barely finding out. Okay, there's this whole story here about um, all of this. Here's the deal. This is an excuse. So, I mean, if he's, if he's moving toward you, then continue to entertain him. If he's moving away from you, then do other things. Because I, this whole story about, you know, other people cheating and all of this, I mean, this is a great way to be like, well, I'm so damaged and I can't um, be normal. And just, I mean, that is ridiculous. So plenty of people who are having had a bad time in the past, figure out, have a good, good time in the future. And you can do the same. So um, that's what I would do there. I would just start adding more men. That's a great solution to things. Add more men. All right. I cannot relate when people say that they want to be fully seen and known by a man in a romantic relationship. I have never, ever felt that way. It feels incredibly unsafe. I've heard that you're supposed to risk that and that the reward outweighs the initial discomfort, but that really does not help me. I think I am just so afraid of whatever perceived flaws they see in me. And even if they claim to love those flaws, the fact that they exist and they are tolerated is repellent. This is a quite a long email, actually. Um, I just took a snippet of it because there's quite a bit to this. And so if this is your email, understand that I did read the whole thing and I did absorb it, but I wanted to go ahead and just address the insecurity in it. And Basically, if you're in a position where you have all of these other things going on and you're upset about multiple tiered problems in your life, the best way to start is to stop focusing on all of that and then just like put together a real plan for what you actually want. Because we can all think about what happened a long time ago or even in the present all day long, but if we don't like construct a plan for the future, there is no way forward. It becomes impossible to know what you actually are doing or, you know, in your email, there's a lot about not being certain about men, not trusting men. I mean, get to know some of them. I mean, go get more of them, like get to know more men, get like, just re instead of having, holding all of these negative attitudes about them, because these beliefs and negative attitudes are yours. They're just things you made up one day. Like you just made this up and you can then feel bad about the things you made up. That's how the system works. So if you undo the things that you've made up that are negative, then you will start to see progress. So next question. I have been in a relationship for almost two years now. My boyfriend insists on me sending him nude photos, even though I have never been comfortable with it. Is this okay? I once got pregnant and he didn't want us to keep the baby. His excuse was that we were both not ready to be parents and our financial status could not bring I'm gonna start with the first question about you insisting on sending him nudes, okay? He can insist on whatever he wants, but then you can decide what, how you'd like to proceed. If you don't want to give him nudes, don't give him nudes. Very simple. If he doesn't like it that you don't want to give him nudes, that's too bad. Simple. Next. This part about um, the getting pregnant and the complications here. Now, your question at the end is, is there any hope that things will work out between us again? Well, I, like I said, my crystal ball and magic wand are in the shop, but there's always hope for things. These questions that you're asking though, don't sound great. I mean, I'm not sure that I would be necessarily thrilled about a situation where somebody didn't want to continue with making a family, even if it happened. Um, and that's what you both want, but that's up to you. You have to decide if this is something you want to accept or reject. Very simple. Do you, is this a situation you want to continue with or not? And then you proceed from there. All right. In the crystal ball questions, we have, does my house go through? Is this man I'm with last? 
Do I get a nice place to live? Do I manage okay? Does my ex regret everything yet? I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know. All right, hi, I'm struggling with trust issues when it comes to me and I don't know how I am. I always go back to my ex. I don't try to go out with other men because I am scared of being hurt. And I would like to know how men operates when it comes to women. The best way to stop is to stop. So if you don't want to go back to your ex, don't go back to him. Very simple. Like, if you want a new man, start moving toward getting a new man. Put a plan together, start dating, put yourself out there, get a new one. Cut off the ex, if that's what you want to do. Now, the bigger part of your question is um, how men operate when it comes to women. And that's, that's a, a big question. And um, how the masculine energy operates is a big topic. And I talk about it for a whole module inside Manifest True Love, which you should check out. All right, next. Hello, Elizabeth. I want to know how to maintain a long-term relationship and avoid getting tired of each other. All right. The best way to do this is to stay interested in the rest of your life because people get bored with each other when they're bored with everything else and then they try to solve their happiness pro or their unhappiness problem by going out and getting a new person because they have nothing else going on and they're not chasing their hopes, their dreams and everything that lights them up. So if you like woodworking and stop doing that so you could spend you know, time watching The Office together on Saturdays, pick up your hobby again. Keep doing that. Keep making sure that you have things to bring back and contribute when you talk to the other person in the relationship. Because once you get to know each other well, you need new stuff, new material to deal with. Because you can't just be having the same conversation over and over again without you guys deciding you hate each other and being bored to death. So, next question. How do I make a man love me and respect my feelings? This is very simple. You love you and you respect your feelings. Everything else in your life has to follow suit. Okay. Hi, I would like to ask why my boyfriend accuses me of cheating, which I've not, and takes possessions of mine, like my CD collection or money, before he leaves me. Then he comes back telling me how much he's spent on me and telling others I'm the problem. It's making me cry and it's making me unhappy. I feel worthless. I wait on him hand and foot, but he treats me like a commodity. What should I do? You should stop. I mean, you should stop doing this. You should stop allowing this. You should put yourself first and make yourself your own number one. Because when you put yourself in the number one position in your life, this doesn't present as a problem anymore. But for some reason, you continue to do this. And that says to me that, I mean, you say in here that you feel worthless. So I know that already from what you're allowing but you don't start to get better treatment unless you require that. So you start requiring that today. All right. I, I would like to know about patience when it comes to relationships, knowing my worth and what I deserve makes it easier for me to break things off in a way that way I spend most of my time single because I believe that a partner doesn't bring anything to the table like fun, romance and desire for more of him. There is no use continuing. Can you help me figure out if I have the right mindset? or I should be more open-minded to certain things. This is a, you know, this is an important fine tuning question. I'm proud of you for asking that. So basically you wanna be filling your life up. So if you're like just always subtracting and saying no to things that might be fun or you just feel fear around, but you're trying to pretend that it's because you just, it's too good for you then that was something that I would look at. But if you don't, if you haven't meet, met somebody where they haven't brought anything to the table, then you're right, there is no use continuing. So it's kind of a double-edged sword because you want to make sure that you're actually going out and finding new people and not just being like, well, nobody's good enough. They're not here when you haven't actually been meeting new ones. Cause it's like, we can tell ourselves we're doing different stuff than we're actually doing because it, it's protective. Okay, so next. Um, why is it that someone you love hurts you more? Well, without more information, it's hard to say. 
And that's not always the case. So this is a hidden limiting belief that people that you love will hurt you. And we can just undo that right away by, by looking for examples where they haven't, by looking for people in your life that still love you and don't hurt you. Okay, and if there are none, what about you? Are you hurting you? Next, how to get a man from stop running away from you when everything is okay. Well, if you think everything is okay and he's running away, I mean, those, those two don't go together. So everything is not okay if he's running away from you. But if you think that when you start to get, you know, a little bit into a relationship, it's been a little while and it's established. And if you're constantly on like the trigger, worried that he is running away from you, you have to look at whether that's objectively actually happening or whether you both need your own lives and whether you're tending to your own garden. Like, are you in your own life? Are you paying attention to your own stuff? Because the more that you pay attention to your own life, the less you're going to be worried about what anyone else is doing, even when they're an intimate in your life. And then you can just give them time and space to work things out if that's what they need to do. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. I have a boyfriend and he's dedicated and committed to me, but we had a fight recently because he cheated on me, but he still doesn't want us to break up because he loves me. Do you think I should trust him? Is there any chance that he would marry me? Well, sure, there could be a chance that he could do a lot of things. But he, you just got done saying that you had a fight and because he cheated on you. So I would wonder why you were still like so interested in whether he would want to marry you or not after he just cheated on you and you had a fight about that. I mean, I think most people who find out about that kind of have a fight about it once it finally comes to light. But... I, I mean, you, people build trust with you. You have to like watch their trustworthy behavior. And since he cheated on you, that's not trustworthy behavior. So I would evaluate whether the marriage question is even important to you right now. All right. My question is on, and then she gives the name of the person. Will he message me? And how does he feel about me? What does the future hold for us? My crystal ball is not here. Like I said, no magic wand. All right, I don't know. My husband of 10 years ended it a couple of months ago. All he did was ask if I was okay as I, all I did was ask if he was okay as he had seemed distant at the time. He then said, no, I've not been happy for years. This isn't working and we need to end it. Oh, geez. We have a beautiful daughter in a lovely house. To me, everything seemed fine. He says, I'm selfish, ungrateful, and don't appreciate him. I do. I just haven't said anything. Oh, he didn't know that you appreciate him. He felt disrespected. Um, I don't understand how he can end things so easily after our 15 years together. He has already been to a solicitor to apply for a legal separation. The last few years have been tough. My mom passed away. Suddenly his dad got ill, then passed away. I'm wondering if he's having a midlife crisis or a nervous breakdown. Shall I sit it out? Will it turn around? I am so lost. All right. I'm really sorry that you're going through this. Now, men stay and thrive where they are appreciated. And they don't, without you telling them directly, they don't, they can't always fill in the blanks and just know that you appreciate them. So it sounds like you've had a rough couple of years, and I'm really sorry about that. I think the best way to proceed forward is to just start pouring your own love and attention on yourself and make yourself happy and um, focus on your own garden, like tend your own garden now and um, let him do what he's going to be doing for a little bit because he felt unappreciated by you. And I'm not saying that that's, you know, it's it years of results went into what happened, but The best way forward is to make yourself happy, start, you know, opening your life up to other people, get back to what makes you interested in you, and you have to see what happens after that. But when you say, shall I sit it out? Well, you have to sit it out without sitting it out. It's kind of a paradox. So you have to go out and make yourself happy, but you can't, the the other person is going to come back while you're waiting. It's like a watch pot that won't boil. So no, don't set it out. 
and it might turn around, but it mo it's most likely to turn around if you're happy in the interim. Okay, let me just check the chat here, see what's all going. All right, um, I see one comment down here. It says, my boyfriend ended our relationship and I'm really struggling. We both felt this was it and we'd be together to the end. He was my person. How do I move on after such a quick end? I removed him from my social media so as not to be hurt when he comments or likes my posts. Yeah, that's a good way to handle it. Um, that's what I continue to do. And, um, I'm a little bit thrown by the fact that this is not still working here. Um, this doesn't seem final, but I have given him space and we've had zero contact. Well, the thing about how it might not seem final is that you just have to sit in the space of making yourself really happy and not really worrying about what he's doing because the more you worry about what a man is doing, the more unhappy you're going to get no matter when it is or what's happening, <laughs> no matter what. Um, so yeah, give him space, give him all the space um, forever and if necessary. 
let me just continue. So the next question I have is, have gotten a lot of great information so far. Oh, this is, this is um, you're inside Manifest True Love. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay, so the way things are explained makes so much sense to me. Um, current situation is that I'm being ignored. I guess ghosted by a guy I was seeing for a few months. And he was super keen in the beginning and initiated a lot of the conversations and dates. Now it's like I'm a stranger um, looking at my behavior to see if I've stepped into the masculine, which I'll admit I have a couple of times, but nothing like how I used to. And I've made progress over the years. I guess my question is, how do you comfortably sit with the unknown? You make yourself really, really busy. Like you focus on everything you wanted to do that you never got around to doing. You take up new hobbies, you meet new people, you go out, you um, meet new men as well. Um, he might reach out, uh, he might reach out again, he might not. I'm not hassling him or constantly messaging, just giving him space and being content in the other areas of my life. I know there's no secret formula or magic pill for any of this, but any advice or wisdom is greatly appreciated. Looking forward to module two. Okay, so, it's really uncomfortable to be in this place, especially kind of after it doesn't make any sense to you. But the way to reconcile it is to think that every time that something like this happens, there is always some kind of big lesson in it for you. There's always some kind of growth that it spurs on or something that you get out of it that doesn't seem apparent at the start. So whether it's that you do more for yourself or you become the person that you've always wanted to be. It's always valuable, even though in the meantime, it feels like crap. So um, for like Lebec who's watching, this is also for you because like um, the other person says here, like these are such quick ends, you know, when somebody just goes away, it's really hard to make sense of it. And, um, and sitting with it is really tough. So the best way to do it is just to like fill up your calendar and do like spoil yourself. Like whatever you think of as spoiling, go spoil all the way. So, all right, let's go and check out what's all happening. Okay. Next question. I was wondering why men treat me different because I'm nice. Shouldn't I be treated better? And also why do they like to play games? So, Thinking that people should treat you a certain way is going to hurt your feelings and you're going to be hurting your own feelings. <laughs> now you can desire and require certain retreatment treatment and then reject anything that doesn't um, serve you. But if you are like, well, this is what I, you know, this is what I should be getting and now I'm going to feel bad. All you're doing is recycling paint. So you're telling yourself, this should be happening. I'm not getting it. Poor me. Um, I'm so nice. Why am I not getting better? Well, you're not getting better because you're not requiring better and deciding that you will have better. You know, and then kicking out anybody who isn't able to live up to your standards. So next, why do men always complain when it comes to money? I would examine and think about whether or not they always complain. When it comes to money, um, what about times that people were generous with you? Were they complaining then? I mean, I don't, I don't see that in my world that men always complain about money. Actually, I can't remember the last time that a man in my world complained about money. So if you're noticing this and then experiencing it, you're going to be manifesting more of it, manifesting more of it. It's going to keep happening. So just undo the whole idea at the, at the base. Okay. This one's kind of long and confusing. Okay. My high school sweetheart and I re reconnected last year around September. We had a really good time together. We shared our dreams, our goals, and what we want to do after we graduate. He even asked me if I could get a couple of tattoos to symbol our strong symbolize our strong love. He swore to me that I'd never regret giving him the second chance. We did um, staff together. Staff together would be telling me things. Um, all right. Up to the, this year, he thinks we rushed into this relationship and he wants to, okay, he won. Now, 
okay, there's, there's a lot of details in here, but it sounds like he got cold feet and he stopped pursuing you. So the idea is to let him do that. If he wants to go away, give him more space than he wants. Um, I understand that you, you, you don't fix this together. You let him decide what he wants to do and then you operate around that at this point. Because if he's told you that he doesn't want to be with you right now, then he doesn't want to be with you. Your, your way isn't the way that he wants right now. So you can have all of the details. He's not playing, a, he's not, it's not wrong when somebody decides that they want something else and it's not up to you to go after them and then tell them that it was so good and that you should be doing something else. So, you know, you, you don't fix it together. So both people decide that they want to do it and then you continue to do it. All right, next thing. I'm in a long distance relationship and I don't know how to make it last because when we talk, I only get upset with him over nothing. Please tell me what to do because I don't want to lose him. Well, why are you getting upset with him? I mean, you're the one getting upset. So you have to decide why you're upset and work that out. Whether that means that you are upset with something he's doing specifically or whatever, but you're the one who's upset. So you can solve that problem in house. All right. Hi, hope you are well. How do I please my woman? I was from a man. Hello. Um, what do men want from their hubbies? Okay. So women want a lot of stuff, just like people want a lot of stuff, but you have to know what, what the woman that you're with wants and then proceed accordingly. You know, you ask her, you find out, then you do those things. Then you see how she responds. Then if she doesn't respond the way you expect, you ask why. Right? Makes sense. Continue that way. Thank you. I have a boyfriend and on the other side, my friend also wants to be with me. Now, how can I choose that one of them is the best to be with? And also how to stop a man from being angry because my boyfriend sometimes becomes very angry. How can I love one person and how do I know who is the best? Okay. Well, I think you're going to want to think about what you want and whether these relationships are living up to that. Um, Stop trying to control people's feelings, first of all. Like, whether your boyfriend is angry or not, really, that that should be up to him. It should not be up to you. And if he gets angry, then he's angry. That's interesting. That's knowledge. That's something, you know, if he's very angry and doing something in your direction that is against your standards, that's one thing. But if he's just getting angry, well, do you like that or not? Do you want that in your life or no? I don't know. That's up to you. And as far as trying to decide between two men, well, I mean, are they meeting your standards? Is this what you want in your life? I mean, you need to give people resolution. Like you need to decide for yourself, which one, and then go with one, like pick a pony and ride the pony because in this place of indecision, all you're doing is torturing yourself and others. So um, how do you know which one is the best? Well, you decide when will be the best and then you go and try to have that relationship. Okay. So there's this guy in my work that I sort of liked and I made the mistake of making it obvious I did and it got out and he found out and it's awkward and he's really nervous around me and he's usually confident around everyone else. And I was out last week and he was there at the club and he approached me and his friend and was like, oh, this is the girl you're always talking about. And lately his friends have been adding me on social media and I'm on Tinder and I added his friend who matched with me, but unmatched immediately after. And now I'm more confused than ever. Do I leave him completely? Okay. There's more to this, but I'm going to start with this question. So it sounds like he might like you a little bit because of how awkward and nervous he is. So I would just let him do what he's going to do. Um, smile at him. Flirt with him. I mean, if you want him to ask you out, you just need to go ahead and like make it, you know, the feminine presence, you know, you, you flirt, you smile, you make eye contact, and then you let him just do what you're, he's going to do instead of, you know, to worry about it. 
So the next, then there's this other guy who's been chatting to me that I like as well, but he's so bad at replying and ghosted me, but now has recently come back and I don't know what he's playing at. Well, you just wait until he tells you. I mean, is he asking you out? Wait until he asks you out. Go out with him. Um, that's the best way to do it. So do I leave both situations alone? Well, yes. So you do leave both situations alone, but not in the way where you're like, well, I'm going to just be done with this. What you do is you just now don't worry about it. It's a non-thing to you. And then when one of them comes into your experience, then it can be a thing. Very simple. Okay. How do you get your boyfriend back after two years? Well, I mean, you can get in contact with him. You can do a lot of things. It just depends on how much you already have going on with him. Maybe you're talking to him. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But it's a little bit of a short question. I mean, once again, the answer to getting a boyfriend back or getting a person back is always going to be that you make yourself happy first and then you start dating other people because there's no urgency otherwise. He could just wait forever. You know, he has no reason to get off, you know, on the horn and start worrying about you if there's nothing else going on in your environment. Okay. Next question. How do you find a man who actually wants a relationship and not just sex? Well, you keep looking. So if somebody says, I just want a physical relationship, then you say, thank you so much for your time. I want a relationship. And then you leave their experience and then you go and look for another person. Um, but there's an element of this question that people ask a lot. And the real question is actually, I think men only want sex. And what do I do about that? So if that's the real question that you're asking, then you're going to want to evaluate that belief because that's not my experience. That's not what happens in my reality. But if that's what's happening in yours, you're going to want to undo that belief by looking at situations and people that aren't giving you that experience and then looking for more of that. Okay, next question. How do I know I'm with the right guy? How do I know he's my soulmate? And how do I ask him what his intentions are? Or when is the right time to ask him his intentions about me? Well, I mean, you have to just think about whether you first want to deal with the soulmate thing because we have a lot of potential opportunities. And if you think that there's only one person that can be your soulmate, you're going to be constantly worried that you're not with your soulmate and that you should go and look for something else when what you do have now could actually be quite good. So that can be a very limiting belief people have in soulmates. Next thing. Um, about the intentions, well, you wait to see until somebody starts offering you things. Like, are they offering you their time? Are they offering you their resources? Are they spending time with you? Um, you don't ask them what their intentions are necessarily because people don't really always know, number one. And number two, it's more about how it's going with you, whether or not they're going to want to do more stuff with you. Does it feel good when you're around? Is, you know, how is the relationship going rather than like, stopping people and asking them what they want because they don't, they're not going to tell you or even know. So that's just going to be frustrating for everybody. Hello. I would like to know I'm in a relationship with my man. He doesn't talk. I start have to start a conversation first. And after that, it's silent, something like 15 seconds. And then I have to think about another conversation again, but when he's drunk, he's talking nonstop. Is he okay? We love each other, but I think he's scared of me at times. Well, if you want him to start the conversation, wait until he starts the conversation. If you're starting the conversation, he can't be starting it by definition. So you don't, you don't force somebody to give you what you want. You require something. So if you're not getting the kind of conversation or discussion that you want, you have to think about whether you enjoy this person enough to continue to be with them. And if you don't, then you move on. And if you do, then you have these kind of conversations and you don't worry about it. All right. My, my boyfriend 
through six months has become unsure about the relationship. I have some insecurities I need to work on. And he was also unsure three months ago because of a lot of small conflicts, but came back because he missed me two days later. Now, because I'm really anxious about an upcoming surgery, I've forgotten to keep working on my insecurities and we've had small problems again with me nagging him and being a little negative and crying a lot. It's been going on two or three weeks. Sunday, a week ago, it crumbled with him not really wanting to kiss me and needing alone time. He said he'd find himself getting irritated with me a lot over the weekend. I said it was okay, but texted him later being needy about it and he got mad that he didn't get the space he had asked for. I then texted him about hanging out on Tuesday, but he didn't want to and ended up telling me he was unsure again. We then talked on the phone for 45 minutes with me listening a lot and being understanding of him. I also told him I want him to just say hi in, in the moment instead of bottling it up, but he said I want to talk for an hour every time. I also asked him if he wanted to not see each other as much for a while or just as much but focusing on the positive, but he didn't know, he just knew that right now he didn't feel like seeing me and wondered if we are too different. We ended the convo with none of us having had more to say, but I feel like it was an okay convo with me, us both listening and talking, and we said we would catch up or talk later. We normally see each other every day. He didn't contact me after four days. So, okay. So this goes on for a little bit longer, but I'm not going to read the rest of it, but except that what should I make of the situation and what should I do now? It worries that he hasn't come back yet this time. Well, this is a little bit like the watch pot problem. You're like evaluating what he's doing. Like you're a hunter in the forest and every sign of the deer coming out of the woods is what you should be paying attention to. So he's not going to come out until you just leave him alone. I mean, what you're doing here is just pursuing him and then he's not giving you the answer that you want, that you want. And then you pursue him and he doesn't give you the answer that you want. So then you pursue him and then add nauseam. What you need to do is give him, like, really give him space. Let him come to you, and if he doesn't come to you again, then you never hear from him again. I mean that quite literally. Like, he said he wants space, you say great, and then that's it. And then you let him come out if he wants to. But the reason you're having this experience is because he's trying to say no in every way he can without being rude to you, and you're pushing it. So... You're not going to get the best of him while you're going through this. And you're also like, there's also so much on the um, individual little details that tells me you're in that like evaluating mode. So now's the time to focus on other people, other hobbies, other stuff you have going on and make yourself happy and stop worrying about what this man is doing. Okay. So, all right. That is what I have for today. And let me just check in the chat here. Thank you to everybody who watched live. And if the replay is working okay, then it will be up on the website. If not, we'll have to see what we're going to do about that. So I hope everybody's having a great Sunday. And thank you so much for joining.